This is a vision that I had for Emmanuel the 15th of March. I saw you in a place that was familiar to me that I've seen you many times. It was sort of the Valley of the Ruins, I guess I'll call it, um, where there was a city left basically in ruins and it's at nighttime and it's near the mountain where I've seen you with Moses. And in this place, I see you sort of on the edge of the city and you kind of are running your hand along some of the ruins and it's just crumbling in your hand. And then you had a Bible in your hand. So it was open basically to the middle of the Bible and you had both of your hands under it and you kind of took one of your hands and I guess ran your fingers through the pages and as you did that you could see the dust from the ruins kind of come out of the Bible. And at this point you tipped the Bible upside down and all of the pages came out and fell to the ground and you still had like the binding of the book in your hands and you took your foot and you pushed the Bible onto the ground with your foot. Then you had the book binding in your hand and you sort of tipped that upside down and kind of not shook it very hard, but kind of just maybe shook it a little bit. And out of just the binding alone flew out these pages, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages. And they flew up into the air and kind of circled around in front of you. And then you you lifted it up a little bit and looked inside of it and and more came out. And this time these pages flew sort of into your heart and into your soul or just into you. And then after this, after this, um, I saw the Bible that was on the ground. I can see it had the open to the middle again and the pages were written on. But I could see in an outline a picture like coming out of it and it was of a it was of two men and they were made of stone and one of the men was on all fours of his knees um all fours of his knees he was bent down on all on his knees and and his hands and the other man sort of stood above him with a sword and the man sliced his head and it separated from his body and sort of rolled on to the next page and then I could see he was kind of the man on the all fours was moving forward and he had his knees and his hands inside of oil lamps, like old fashioned ones from back in biblical times. There weren't any oil in these lamps, but he was walking on all fours onto the other page. Um, and he had his knees and his hands in these lamps with, with there was no oil. And although the man had no head, you could see him looking up at the pages flying in the sky. And as he's watching what's happening, the pages, um, they all start to stack in a really, really, really high stack of pages. And the first page sort of comes down off of the high um, the high stack and it floats down on your arms and your arms are empty and basically the page sort of melts into your arms and into your skin and it sort of lights up your the inside of your skin and kind of evaporates into you. The next pages um, that you have, now you have the binding of the Bible back in your arms and all these pages start flying back in to the Bible. And once all the pages are in the Bible, these two candles are lit, one on each side, because it's open again to the middle. And there's a candle lit on each side um, of the pages, a tall candle. And then um, you closed the book. You closed it and, and, and it became fully the book of the Bible. 
Now, the man that was bent down on all fours, um, he was watching all of this happen. And as he's watching this happen and as he's seeing these pages that were flying around being put back, um, he stands up. And you can see that his hands are now have been bound by, like, handcuffs. And as soon as he sees what's happening and chooses to stand and he lifts his handcuffs up to you as like surrender or help or um, an understanding of what happened there, his head is put back on. So as he stands, he receives his head back on. And that was the end of the vision. There seems, um, recently, Sister Nicole and a couple of visions in, seems a, is a continuation of the same vision in different time frame. And uh, actually it's indicating a journey. Um, I, uh, in this vision storyline that I walked through a valley in the you know in the desert or dry place where that's mountain I was standing on the mountain I think the former vision the first vision was standing in the mountain you went sending power to choice certain wicked figures like a dragon I don't quite remember the storyline uh, I think uh, you c we're gonna have with those vision is recording Again, I, I think only briefly mention some details because while I'm um, <laughs> my reflection to still refresh, I don't want to forget uh, the things. Is I have a hard time to settle down writing things out, so I'm gonna use this all do record to do that. So anyway, um, I think the first vision she he he saw me standing. On the mountain top, seeing, I thought there was a war broke out. Now that is, interestingly happened while I was watching on YouTube, certain video, um, showing uh, supposed to be the place more stand on the mountain, and with the help of Aaron and her, um, praying for the army. Led by Joshua and others, which are battling the Amalekites on the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. Uh, I think the place called the Raphadim. And um, uh, we're interesting to read the detail of the region. However, there's a major uh, phase of that region. The first part was this. Um, I think the dragon, uh, when the room, the city come out of the sand, the dragon tried to overtake it. So there's a war going on, and uh, somehow some um, supernatural power gave to me. I was able to send lightning uh, from my hand on the mountain top and strike the dragon. I think that's actually happened in the former seasons. Um, my life. Uh, you know, actually recently we talked about wrestling with the spirit of wife and I don't necessarily want to conjure up understanding. I try to just, because those things are so scattered and uh, organized, uh, come in the way most time unexpected through vision, dreams, and happiness is life. So it's hard to really cohesive to, uh, to give a organized presentation. Uh, but it, with the progression of uh, these two visions, continued vision, then you call hand. For me, because I was in the vision, uh, I think I have some understanding. The dragon um, that I was wrestling and overcome in the first vision, I believe is more about my person. This vision I actually applied to my personal walk, so I'm going to use from speaking from personal experience, personal point of view, and it has to do with the Chinese culture, I believe, you know, the culture, 
uh, China is symbolified in many ways, you know, their idol, their worship, and their symbol of uh, honor and power is a, a dragon, which is a wicked, wicked, wicked creature conjured up by uh, man's ideas. In, I don't know exactly how historical that it was. I don't get into. I don't want to get into the details of the discussion. <laughs> the difference, for example, the Chinese idea of dragon than uh, other kind of dragons like the ones you know in in Britain fairy tales stuff like that. Anyway, that being said, so I think it has to do with me was able with God's help to be delivered and overcome. This a principality, if you will, or this mindset is a culture set up, just like the Prince Grace or the Prince of Persia. So it's uh, basically a culture, uh, you know, symbolize a culture, a, a power uh, that inspires certain culture, uphold certain culture. So I was uh, blessed by the Lord, uprooted from uh, even grew up in China, well steep in. The knowledge is traditions and uh, it's it's a uh, it's it's culture, but I was uh, delivered from it. You know, have a, some unique experiences along that journey. I don't want to get into the nitty gritties again. It's basically it takes some struggle, you know, for me to get over that kind of attachment, that orientation of thinking who I am. I understand I'm. Born of God, a son of God, called by God, um, no national affiliation, whether our old tradition as a Chinese or affiliation with its national interest. You know, so we are members of God's household, citizens of His kingdom. So, the God, uh, in dramatic ways, have uprooted me from those. Constructs of life and in life experiences allow me to depart from those things. Never um, in a harsh way, but um, in a way that he his mighty hand has done that. So I really have no other choice but to um, navigate into this understanding and I begin to walk in that. So that is, I think, the first phase uh, that Detroit the Dragon. Dismiss the enemy, the attack. Then this city scene was built up or erected, morphed into some kind of according to call descriptions like a, a elephant shaped structure. See, I actually found some picture in Thailand. Uh, in the beginning, I thought, oh, elephant. Well, is that something to do with, uh, um, you know, um, uh, Eastern things again or Thailand things again around the time. <laughs> We were talking about some uh, information or encounter with seeing an elephant, you know, so stuff like that. And um, again, let me spare the details. But uh, the, even when I reflect the first region I recognized, to understand what right now I'm going to share the first part of the overcome Chinese culture, the second part I begin to, uh, not 100%, but uh, I'm... Ninety percent sure is actually the Christianity, uh, with the Republican Party, formed this political hybrid of religion, if you will, and um, we can call it Christian nationalism in this American nations. You know, mainly is the support Republican Republican Party, um, it, a changed entity through the year, a changed the philosophy and the practices of uh, what, what these they want to do, as any party man will morph his self, morph his philosophy through the years. For sure, where everybody can clearly confess and witness that uh, the Republican Party today is not the party even in Reagan time, not mentioned in, you know, like the time of Lincoln, for example, where the party started. Anyway, I don't want to get into the political commentary there. I just wanted to identify that uh, entity, uh, the 
uh, that it come out the sand come you know then I think it turned to dust if you I don't exactly recall the first vision now with the recent vision which is as heard moments ago was that I was standing outside on the other side I think of the city and uh, there is a, a Bible breaking down and then ref, re recovered and there's a man beheaded and getting recovered I believe that is actually is the reformation work that is down the road I'm just a symbol there to really is unravel uh, the intellectual mind is a man which is steep in the tradition of evangelism and even Catholic, Catholic Catholicism, you know, so basically use their man's intellect to try to understand God's holy scriptures that conjure up different understandings, try to map out how to give guidance more than uh, for morality or other spheres of personal life but actually try to inform whole society, whole government, whole ruler of this world should uh, conduct their life. You know, Paul actually did a contrast in this in Second Corinthians, uh, uh, First Corinthians two, I believe. Told me the mind or the the uh, the 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 head, if you will, the headship of Christ inform us. Uh, so different wisdom, telling the rulers of this world, the wisdom of this world, etc. Um, so that's pretty much in cause wisdom, recent wisdom, actually just confirmed that you know verified that the scripture for me at least this understanding. Uh, many years ago, Tim and I, I came to some relation thing. For the discussion with the team, we come to the similar conclusion that, for example, the idea of beheading, as I mentioned on a few occasions, especially in the book of Revelation, the Bible, is actually is not a physical beheading, as we some would interpret, or literal, than a kind of death, but rather it's a replacement of wisdom or counsel through the renewed mind by the transformation, transforming power of the Spirit, as in Romans 12, 1-2, Paul mentioned. Uh, again, you know, First Corinthians, second chapter, is another description or explanation of this change of mind, reformation of mind, to how the mind of Christ, rather than the mind of Colonel Man. It is not just a pious mind, rather, it's a mind of a, a song, a mind of a, um, kingly wisdom, the priestly wisdom, in a sense. You know, because then, chapter in Second Corinthians two, uh, First Corinthians two, you can see it. He talks the rulers, you know, the ruling wisdom, talking about the Christ being this wisdom. With it is a power, authority, and therefore a ministry and a covenant for redemption or reconciliation of mankind and uh, in him he is a wisdom where is actually our salvation, our holiness, our righteousness and you can read that yourself so uh, then through the Holy Spirit education we can possess this wisdom and change our thinking, change our mindset have the mind of Christ, the anointed one and you know the anointing in God uh, is a for two office, enabling two offices or two graces that is a priestly ministry and a kingly ministry. Kingly is a minister, business of God's kingdom. As a son, you take care of you know, the Father's kingdom. And then the ministry in his household, your caretaker or steward in his house, servant in his house. As a son, you empty yourself, take on the role of a servant to serve fellow believers or disciples, if we will, uh, in the name of the Lord or with the Lord as co-laborers to provide 
nourishment to them. You know, in this case, obviously the nourishment is Christ's life, which is translated into his love, his character, above all his wisdom, his ways. All right. So, anyway, that being said, I think、um, what he indicated in this, if there is a personal obligation. Is、uh, indicating maybe there is a season coming, that God might、uh, allow me and others. I'm just representation of a song company that have been taught with God's wisdom to able to unravel the intellectual or the evangelical or other ways understanding the Bible and re restore the spiritual understanding in the Bible. I guess with it. For sure, man's mind will be renewed,、uh, you know, beheaded. This change their mindsets, and then person, in this case, is a is a is a we're a good picture of a, a willing disciple. Am I?、Um, okay. That being said, right now actually four four four. The Lord told me to register that. So, okay, bless you if you you go to hear this.